Testing, testing. Mä oon tehnyt testauksen.
Hello. Hello, Anna. Nice to meet you. Uh, we, we had a lot of problems with internet connection, so I hope that uh, we will manage to... Yes. Fingers crossed here, it is uh, like we have a big thunder uh, wave going uh, across Estonia. So I also didn't know if I could actually get internet, but now it seems like it's working. So, uh, and we, we couldn't uh, um, connect via Bokoa, and they said that uh, our uh, panel is uh, tomorrow. Mm. So, a lo 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 lot of confusion. Okay, but now, now you are here, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me, we will uh, first have uh, uh, presentations speakers and then uh, it is 15 minutes and then five minutes for discussion or we will have a discussion at the end well it depends we uh, i did it so that uh, we had 15 minutes per presenter and after each presentation we had questions maybe this is uh, better because um, not all um mm, presenters are have the exact same like topics mm -hmm. so maybe uh, otherwise some presenters will not get any questions at all that's why i i had all the questions after each presentation okay and then uh, we had this system that uh, who wanted to uh, ask a question then during the presentation they uh, uh, said that in the chat and then okay. i could see that uh, this person wants a question or or they just raised hand uh, this was also something that worked. Okay. And then we had, uh, you, you were not present in the, uh, uh, okay. And no, then we had... Um, we were present only for two presentations. Oh, in the beginning. The, the, the time zone difference. Okay. So um, I was here with uh, Dragana uh, at um, ah, 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And um, we thought that the uh, panel will start at 10 o'clock local time, but okay. 8 o'clock local time. Mm. So we only see two last, two last, two last presentations. Okay. But then uh, you also got an idea what what were the main things that we talked about, because in the end uh, it was quite uh, clear that uh, a lot of those presenters uh, were thinking about this local and global uh, idea and then uh, um, um, for, for example some memes that I, I saw in the uh, PowerPoint presentation mm -hmm. it is similar in Serbia only with a different caption or yes, translation yes. in Serbia yes yes so this is something that we could if we have time in the end we could uh, talk some more about or uh, let's see what the presenters uh, what what the presentations are about this time um and based on that i have Uh, did you get the uh, bios, the the short introductions to I, each? I, of I the... didn't get all bios, but I googled uh, okay. That's good. on mm -hmm. the internet, so I found their uh, bios there. So. Okay, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. I hope that I will um, read their names and uh, surnames in the right way. <laughs> yes, this is always a question. But I'm sure they won't mind if it's not uh, perfect. Tero <laughs> uh, wants to, 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 to join yes. us. Tero mm -hmm. uh, is one of the presenters, right? Yes, yes. So it's, uh, it's also possible to maybe uh, uh, try this uh, share screen and, uh, and mm -hmm. also try to uh, show the presentation. Tero, if you would like to to do it, then it's possible now before the session starts. Yeah, I can try. Just a sec.
I'm just gonna make some modifications there. <laughs> Is there, is there thunder in uh, Finland as well at the moment? Hello, it's coming, coming in soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just got here to talk. Mm. I can hear it. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully the internet will. Yes, we we had a little shutdown of internet and electricity, but now it's uh, back. So I, I hope it will stay this way. And hi, Judith. It's nice to see you after a long pause. <laughs> it's a pity that it's only through the screen, but but I hope we will get the chance to catch up at um, the next conference, maybe. Sorry, <laughs> I was mute. Yeah, sorry. So I also hope, and it's it was also good for me to see you when I saw your name. Oh, it's Lisi. I can. <laughs> did you did you join us for the previous session as well, or you were somewhere else? At yes, the... yes, I was here in the previous session, but I had to go to the kindergarten for okay. my little son, uh, because we uh, uh, we made a mistake because of the time, you know, the time in Finland and the time in yeah. Hungary. Jesus Christ, it starts, and uh, so. That was yes, that's the class, uh, in the morning. It's because, a bit tricky. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't have been surprised uh, actually living in Europe, but we have managed to make it a surprise for us. Yes. So, Tero, can you uh, share the screen or are you still making the modifications? <laughs> The last minute changes. Yep, still making last minute changes. <laughs> but yeah, I can share the one I am working on. It shouldn't take that much time. Is it visible? Yes, we can see it. Can you try sharing the, uh, yeah, is it just? Yeah. Well, yeah. Slide show. <laughs> the slide show. Yeah. 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 So maybe we have uh, four minutes uh, before uh, starting of our session. Uh, if uh, somebody else wants to try uh, sharing screen mode. Okay, uh, and hi everyone. Um, I can try just, just for the sake of it. So is it okay? Yes. All right. Can you also try maybe starting the slideshow? Because we had some problems with that yesterday. 
So we can just say if it's fine, sorry. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you can start the slideshow too so that we can see that uh, the slides are actually working mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you yeah. perfect and and Sasha, do you want to try your Hi. screen as well? Hi. Okay, I can try. It's not a problem. Just let me find it here. Hmm. It doesn't show me. <clears throat> ah, here. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. Hello. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it works. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Should we start or we will wait a few more minutes? Well it's still one more minute. Maybe let's let's wait this. But uh, you don't have to uh, maybe introduce the panel anymore because uh, or well yourself yes, but uh, maybe not the uh, whole idea. Unless you uh, want to add something, I already introduced it the last time. So. Uh, I can see that the last uh, presenter in this session uh, also entered the uh, the room. So now we have all the presenters at least. So basically, yes, maybe it's a good time to start. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is a great pl pleasure to uh, be a chair of uh, um, another session of our panel. Uh, our first uh, speaker is Sasha Babic. Uh, she's a um, research associate uh, from the Research Center of Slovenian Academy of Science and Art. And uh, she's a folklorist who mainly research short folklore forms, such as greetings, curses, riddles, etc. And also, she, she's uh, teaching at postgraduate school of Slovenian. Academy of Sciences, and she teaches the first popular forms in culture and society. And the title of her presentation today is The Picture of Life to Me, the Response on COVID 19 and Life Changes in Slovenia. So, Sasha, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Hello to everyone. Thank you uh, for your time and uh, energy to listen to my uh, presentation. I will um, immediately start um, sharing my PowerPoint um, and explaining um, some, um, let's say, um, pre-thoughts on the um, on my presentation. Uh, I applied with the title "The Picture of Life Through Memes." So um, actually, my uh, intention was to see. Uh, what memes tell us about life. But uh, at the same time, as me and my colleague, Katarina Schrim-Vendramin, 
were uh, making collection of the memes together and therefore that's why she's written also on this presentation as a co-author because she actually is uh, there are raised also questions on building such collections um specific collections uh, as a folklore a part of folklore archive so um as we uh, all know in this panel i believe is that um each major event um somehow uh, generates uh humoristic units in one way or another, either stories, on the other hand, some jokes, or nowadays in um, contemporary time, a lot of um, memes. And uh, as you see, I took uh, quite um, uh, quite widely what meme uh, means to me, what I took for a meme. So um, it was as, is also stated in Schiffman. Uh, it, is, it was treated as postmodern folklore uh, with shared norms and values. And I took it as an, uh, let's say, a digital it, internet unit uh, with photo, picture, or only with text. Because as you will see further, and I will also comment it, a lot of uh, memes aren't actually memes as it is treated nowadays. It is text in a color, colorful square. And um, it's just the form how to pass on some humorous thoughts or jokes, but it has the form of, let's say, picture. Um, it is framed, it's not uh, written as a text by itself. So these memes present to me like image as a language and language is in um, a folklore um, concept also mirror of society and in anthropology also of course and one way to uh, analyze this language so to say it is uh, semiotics with um, the concept of sign uh, which has two parts signifier and signified or as if we say Pierce's, um, um, Pierce's definition, it uh, is object that um, is from representment and interpreter and memes by his uh, definitions are icons of our society, uh, which represent uh, in many cases over exaggerated interpretation of reality. So um, if we go on the material that I wouldn't be um, so much on the theory, uh, at the beginning in Slovenia, we uh, got many photos, pictures and writings that connected coronavirus with uh, Corona beer and all the jokes connected to it. Uh, these were the first units and since then, uh, Katarina and me um, collected over 2,500 units, unique units. Uh, they do not um, double themselves. Um, these, all these units are connected with COVID-19 one way or another. Um, and the uh, material was spread and collected uh, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Viber, WhatsApp, Messenger, and email. We actually also created our um, co-workers Viber group so that even our colleagues could send their um, different jokes and memes that they got and we didn't. Uh, so our collection was built more or less um, uh, by the opportunity while uh, in the Slovenian Ethnographic Museum, they gave out the public call for the um, COVID humor. Uh, and it is written not, there are no memes, there are just texts, jokes as texts, and um, the uh, collection is opened. Um, of course, when so many um, units appear, when one collects so many units, there is always the question what to do with this material and uh, different forms of it. 
uh, what is meme, what is not, uh, what to do with texts, should we retype it as they did in uh, ethnographic museum, or should we leave it like this one with smileys, as you see, uh, this yellow one here, and take it as a meme. Um, and um, the classification here is rather actually old, as to say, like half of a year or something. We didn't uh, get a new one, but we then um, put these memes into different folders and uh, it is um, semantically classified by different uh, topics that they address. But we have to know that uh, a lot of these memes uh, belong to different, uh, at the same time, to different topics. It is like uh, already Piret showed that, for example, homeschooling and work are often put together. And um, I don't know, shopping and toilet paper at the same time. So um, there's another question about the uh, classifications. Um, what uh, was, let's say, um, interesting, but quite, ex uh, we expected that was that um, there are three languages used in these memes. Of course, English as lingua franca, Slovenian and Serbo-Croatian, which is quite often, oftenly used in um, jokes, Slovenian jokes or jokes that are spreading in Slovenia because um, most Slovenian understand Serbo-Croatian language. Uh, why I say Serbo-Croatian and not Croatian or just Serbian, it is because uh, when um, I was, for example, in primary school, I still have had uh, lessons of Serbo-Croatian language. It was the mixture of, let's say, Southern Slavic languages. So I always say that I speak Southern, South Slavic Esperanto because it's neither one or other language, but we all understand it. Uh, most Slovenian units, uh, most units that use Slovenian language are in the form of short texts, so, uh, like the one that I showed you here with this uh, yellow square with smileys. And uh, international memes are not adapted to our um, either language or uh, situation, they're rather recycled. Only a few numbers of them are actually adapted or translated. So uh, I wanted to uh, go uh, deeper into this semantic uh, part of memes and semiotic part of memes to see uh, what kind of everyday um, life is exposed in these memes and what can we read out from them about not so much about humor, but our um, noticements on everyday life. So of course, as I believe uh, everywhere in Western world, there were many memes and jokes on toilet paper. And it was really interesting because um, actually in Slovenia, there was no problem with toilet paper, no true problem. The problem became uh, a bit more serious when people um, falsely uh, got the situation so that they bought so much toilet paper that the stores couldn't um, get from the factories the new ones, but the factories had toilet paper, so it wasn't tr a true problem. And that's why um, there were quite many jokes on toilet paper. The other um, was on... Um, on um, swimming suit, of course, and some other um, stuff that um, actually got disappeared, like flower, like, um, oh, I forgot the word in English, sorry, class. Uh, to raising bread. Yeast. Uh, yes, thank you, yeast. Um, there uh, people bought quite a lot of yeast and one could not uh, buy it in the store for some time. Uh, the other um, big topic in memes was also alcohol. Uh, I must say that um, unfortunately Slovenia is one of the countries that has problems with alcohol such or another problem. Um, too much of it is uh, uh, consumed. And um, there were many jokes on um, 
the level of alcohol, not only consumption. So um, as you see here, just a second, oops. Uh, the uh, drawing here is um, man with the glass as a mask. And this is um, Steyrska mask against Corona. Steyrska is the uh, northern east part of Slovenia, which is known for wine. And of course, there are, typically there are people drinking too much. We uh, have had a beer, um, which was, uh, there was a word game. It's a pivo, it is vaccine, and pivo, it is beer. So it is combined together as a name of the beer. Uh, there were a lot of um, a lot of jokes on how we cannot go to the pubs and drink uh, in this yellow square. It is before Corona. Uh, there was pub in every village, but now it, there's pub in every gar garage, and one must not wash hands. They should uh, drink beer and greet with beer. And uh, Jerusalem Chan, there is. Um, bottle of white wine from Jerusalem. It is place, it is small place in Slovenia called so. And um, it's table wine, but um, there was a political um, incident and joke afterwards that this is uh, table water because one of the politics uh, said that they didn't drink uh, alcohol uh, while having meeting, they drank water and so it was there there was quite a lot of context so i don't have time now to do so um one of big topics are of course uh professions one is of course uh making a vaccine and one that is uh probably uh typical for um ex-Yugoslavian countries, I will put it like that, is uh, that this witch here is made, uh, she's Astra as a name from Zenica. Zenica is a um, city in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So uh, this the uh, witch is making AstraZeneca, Astra is Zenica vaccine. And there was, of course, a lot of hairdressers and uh, also word games on the hairdressers. Um, architectures, uh, gynecologists, and fitness center with all the equipment needed uh, to get physically shaped. Uh, life in quarantine was mostly um, using um, problems with working from home, relationships like five days in isolation, listening to your wife, like this poor man with big ears, and that um, they intentionally put snow outside during the winter um, so that everyone can see who goes out of the house uh, in the times of isolation. With children, there were many um, <clears throat> means with um, uh, schooling, homeschooling. Uh, these two, for example, this is how to get a good mark in school when the school is from home. Uh, there's another one. And by the way, if you haven't seen, there's a CF meme uh, group uh, in this um, chat group. And there is the same meme with a cat like uh, this girl is on the wall, there's a cat. It's a version of this meme. It's really nice. I recommend you to see. And of course, uh, having uh, babies give birth in the times of Corona. And there were many protective means with different photos, different ideas from different salami to, I don't know, um, tampons and so on. And... Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, uh, but uh, we are um, in five minutes frame, so if you can... Okay, uh, I will hurry up. So there were many memes, memes of course, uh, connected also with physics, which was, in an other, uh, on the other hand, quite uh, funny because a lot of people uh, that I've been talking uh, with them um, around... Were, were saying that they were actually getting in shape because suddenly they had time to go to uh, the mountains, to forest and so on. Festivals, 
like Easter and Christmas uh, were a topic. And of course, uh, holidays and traveling, uh, most of them, you know, from last year. The one that I really liked this year was this one. If you see, I'm going there with mouse. It writes, if you, when you miss see so much that you cannot notice that there's a cake on the photo, not the sea with a ship here. And um, one huge group, and I think that it's the most representative group is with politics. It is quite normal because we have a big politic crisis now. It's with the measurements, it's with the uh, decisions, the public statements. And um, I might say that, I, I should say that politics crisis is now bigger than Corona crisis that we have. So it's really connected one with each other in these memes. And of course, vaccination memes. I wanted to uh, show also that uh, we uh, used art as it was uh, on the, in the first panel, it was stated out about the art. Uh, what is interesting in Slovenian case is that we uh, do not have um, units with Slovenian art. It's only this international um, art with all, of course, the uh, variants. Um, the challenges we have is of course about cl classification uh, about a, a different period of time and how to make all this um, material understandable um, also in, uh, in the future, how to build uh, the collection with strong categories and sufficient context that it will be understandable also, also in 50 years. This is one thing. And the other thing that um, I might say is that the memes show the uh, biggest changes in our uh, everyday life. They show where we notice the, um, the uh, biggest, I don't know, um, noticeable things. Um, and uh, all these uh, changes, and even though it is used in humor, there is an, a question actually that maybe humor in these memes is actually compensating fear. We are questioning ourselves, we are making fun of ourselves, but still I think that through these memes, the sign that we get is fear. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sasha, for your interesting presentation, which shows that uh, um, I suppose that uh, our data here um, is quite uh, similar, not just with themes, but uh, it shows how the globally popular memes are localized in, uh, in local context. And uh, uh, does anybody have uh, any questions? Uh, yes, Lisi. Yes, thank you very much, Sasha. Uh, just a brief, uh, very brief question, which uh, actually relates back to a presentation by uh, Katalin Varga, who should also be present here, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. who said that um, most of the um, uh, memes of COVID memes in uh, in Hungary were textual, and you also underlined or or mentioned that uh, there were a lot of uh, textual uh, jokes, uh, humor in your sample. So, do you see uh, like um, uh, development through towards this um, in the memes so that the, the image isn't of great importance? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. I just think that this uh, globalized picture or globalized um, photo of the meme is so prevail prevalent that people maybe do not feel uh, the urge to create new ones as photos and they can um, limit themselves to short texts. And it's easier actually to write um, on Facebook, for example, short text than to create meme with picture, with photo. But I must say, I, I must confess, let's say so. Uh, I didn't go, I know that we have a group of high school memes, for example, and they are generating new ones uh, with photos and pictures because after all, uh, we have to acknowledge that Facebook is more or less for older people. I don't mean elder, like, but it's not for youngsters. They don't use it. And um, even our um, 
mine and Katarina's uh, company or, or our co-workers are adult, pe adult people. So I think that these true memes are more often or more used among youngsters, at least my son says so. Uh, Okay. Uh, you, you must uh, turn off your microphone. Do you hear me? Mm. Do you hear? Oh, there's, there's a problem. We, we have a lot of echo, so I suppose maybe you are signed in from two accounts at the same time. I thought that, that might... Um, it's also possible to write the question in the chat and then uh, the moderator can uh, read the question. Yes, of course. Now, do you hear me with echo? Sorry. Do you have any headphones you could use, maybe, that could help? Uh, so, Dragana, you write your uh, question in chat. No, I didn't write. But, but if you have a question, you could write it in chat. Okay, all right. Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, uh, now, uh, I think Tia Meder has a question, or uh, uh, somebody else has, uh, Alexander Novik. Okay. okay, thank you so much. I have a, a very brief question for Sasha. Uh, Sasha, we saw different patterns of humor in your paper, but did you find any religious tema of no. men's religious? No, no, there were actually no religious uh, tema. It's only, oh yes, we did have one. It was comment on, um, what countries in Europe uh, have mass service, but do not have schools, Cl schools are closed. And then there is a photo and only Slovenia was colored. So it was critics on this because uh, churches was, were opened for a longer time than schools. So there was these critics, but not humor per se that it would target relig religion or anything at least I don't know maybe Katarina uh, has some but I, I I'm not I, I didn't it didn't cross my path Katarina um yeah one of my friends that is um, more religious uh, she posted some memes but I think it was these memes uh, circulated among a specific group of people so we too and our colleagues that uh, send uh, the the memes to us um, so we didn't found it a lot of this meme or any just just one as sasha said but yeah i think it was circulating but in the specific group of people okay thank you so much thank yeah. you maybe i would answer also ida's question she wrote it in the chat um, it, it is so that um, actually um, uh, Serbo-Croatian language, let's say so, this um, Slavic Esperanto uh, is not local language. It is still foreign language for us, but it is in many cases, it is used just to make distance to the topic one is uh, telling about. It's like, uh, for example, it's the same mechanism as saying um, some swearing word in foreign language. It's not as bad as if you say it in your own language. The same is with the jokes in Slovenian language. If one doesn't want to um, make it its own, then it's Croatian. But of course, it's not something that we would do consciously. You know, it's and somehow people think that it's the joke is funnier when it is in Serbo-Croatian language and not in Slovenian language because Slovenian language is supposed to be very puristic one, although it's, it's, it is not. So um, 
this is actually um, the, the, the argument. There, there are no other arguments, if you ask me, just to make this distance to the topic they are telling. Uh, okay, we have uh, two more questions for Sasha. Uh, her presentation was so interesting that uh, raised a lot of questions. Uh, it is uh, uh, Dragan Antonievich uh, raised a question. Memes are not only icons in semiotic sense, they are often very contextual and intertextual. So sometimes it seems that they look like s symbols. Definitely, I agree, yeah. I uh, simplified the statement. I agree, and not that um, they are often very contextual and intertextual. They are usually uh, contextual and intertextual. That's why Pierce is better to use uh, for the interpretation because he um, he um, uses he he knows that the interpreter who gets the picture has to have all the apparatus behind uh, uh, the picture, all the knowledge to interpret um, the symbol or the icon. I, Ms. Mrs. Antonievich, I definitely agree. Uh, and the second question from Domekos Marien, what do you think can memes be interpret, interpret as elements of an independent folklore genre? It's always the question uh, which is raised. And there's, of course, always the question of genre borders. Uh, where does meme and, and uh, some, let's say, textual jokes start? Where does, uh, and uh, the other question is, of course, how long the memes last and what lasts of this meme? Is it just a photo and then text changes or the text stays and the picture changes or all stays or everything. So um, I think it's still discussable and it's still in um, uh, with a big uh, question mark under uh, over it. But uh, anyhow, it is folklore in a way that it goes uh, through um, the internet really uh, quickly. It, the people share it, they um, give their opinion, they uh, use this uh, fixed, more or less fixed form to express themselves. So in a way we can look uh, at memes as a folklore genre, partly, but just to define it in a way as we can define fairy tale or real, I'm not sure that we can by now, maybe we need more time that we fix it. Thank you, Sasha, very much. Uh, we have problems with uh, with uh, with echo. Uh, uh, our next speaker is uh, Eda Kalmure. Uh, she is a senior research fellow at the Department of Folkloristic of the Est Estonian Literary Museum. She has written monographs, articles, uh, and textbooks about Estonian youth lore, uh, then about history and methodology of folklore, uh, about uh, rumors and urban legends. Uh, uh, the title of her paper is Nature is Coming Back, Dolphins and Dinosaurs from Fake News and Doomsday Imagin Imagination to Humor. Um, Edda, the floor is yours. Thank you. Trying to share my screen. No. Uh, hmm. You you must click on your presentation. Mm -hmm. When you share screen. Okay. Yes. Eh. Now you see. Yes. Yeah. And from the beginning. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, the Corona pandemic, which uh, uh, evolved into a global catastrophe, proved to be a continuation of growing nature and climate, climate uh, disaster 
This involves climate changes caused by pollution and global warming, uh, vast wildfires, woodland and nature pollution, the destruction of many living species and the unusual behavior of animals. In other words, the question of economic welfare against sustainable nature was an extremely relevant global theme long before the pandemic. Uh, I am a narrative uh, researcher, uh, specialized to rumors and legends, and I followed one certain case, uh, what started from personal tall tale or joke posted in social media. And uh, um, I uh, tried to follow in my paper how the theme of self-restoring nature brought on by the pandemic was carried via various uh, genre matrices of the folklore and modern media, and also the wider context of the themes and how the popular themes are adapted locally. Uh, which narrative motives and strategies were used to achieve uh, truthfulness or to satirize uh, it. Uh, the following example as here have been collected from uh, the, my approximately uh, 400 Facebook friends, uh, accounts and Facebook groups, the Belief Narrative Network and International Society for Contemporary Legend Research. Uh, there was a discussion about memes, what they are. Uh, I have uh, no uh, time to um, uh, introduce deeply, but researchers of contemporary legends and rumors already two decades have been studying subject matter in which seemingly realistic content is offered as an image. Uh, one of, uh, of the more telling phenomena, of course, uh, which characterize interaction during the pandemic are images uh, with pieces of text and spread among each other memes. The participation culture has been very intense and global during Corona. Widely speaking, um, this means spreading information online on a visual form and mixing the ideas and images which spread easily there. Uh, humor, repetition, dialogue, simplicity, creativity, playfulness, imagery, in unpredictability and digital context, all of these are characteristics of memes. Uh, Limo Schiffman has studied creative processes in memes that use uh, photographs in the way of sharing and repeating. Uh, uh, within the first months of COVID-19 related quarantine, uh, I followed the media and social media theme debating that the quarantine induced decrease of pollution is having a positive effect on the environment and the nature starting to self-restore. News stories uh, with photographs, which appeared in the end of March 2020 and reporting, uh, reported to the return of swans, reported to the return of swans and dolphins uh, to the canals of Venice which formerly suffered from tourism uh, screen seemed uh, very hopeful. Uh, the news went viral immediately. Uh, online news sites developed many versions uh, of it and it received millions of likes on Facebook, Instagram uh, and TikTok. Uh, these stories were also believed and spread in the Estonian social media. The photos depicting um, uh, the photos depicting uh, the crystal clear water in the canals with fish, dolphins, and swans, in in it seemed only to confirm the news truthfulness. But international media determined the original source of this tall tale in a few days and debunked it. The dolphins of Venice were filmed in the harbor of Sardinia, hundreds of, hundreds of kilometers away. Uh, the swans mm, in the post, 
the Svens um, in the books are nothing unheard of. They often frequent off canals of Purana, which is a small island in the Venice district, and which is also where the photos were taken. It turned out that this viral photo had a very motivated author, someone named Kaveri Kanapati Ahuya, who lives in New Delhi, India, and enjoyed all the attention to this tweet on photograph published in, on March uh, 16th. The purpose of the tweet was to share something that gave me joy in those dark times, he said. He never assumed that news sites might pick it up and that it will go viral and cause harm. And <clears throat> uh, given the spread in the time frame of the news, it must be said that this story was debunked in just a few days. Ahuya made his viral post on March 16th and on March 20th, the National Geography was, Geographic was covering his purposely made uh, fake news. And I collected a localized meme uh, on March 23rd in Estonia. I will uh, introduce a few of, uh, of the more distinguishing memes uh, of those parodies of picture and narratives. While the message of nature recovering is uh, at the forefront uh, of those memes, it is usual to specify uh, at first the local, um, uh, the local um, public reactions, mix uh, backgrounds and symbols based on local reality in Estonia. The so selection was good because uh, Emma Yogi, um, Mava River, and Taivas Koda, it's another meme uh, on uh, uh, right side, are significant nature reserves uh, which uh, should self restore during quarantine. Delphins returning to Emma Yogi uh, in Tartu. And uh, mm, the background is the that uh, Emayoki has been facing a pollution surge from a potential new paper factory uh, in not, uh, not long ago. And uh, another meme is about the dolphins return to mate uh, at Taivaskota because the ship Lonni uh, stopped sailing during Corona uh, time. Another category of memes interpreted nature returning differently, which has to do with lost and extinct animals returning to a world uh, what has been cleaned by Corona. For example, if people stay at home and the streets are empty, uh, once extinct dinosaurs uh, will return to Scotland. Uh, uh, this um, theme, uh, and there are it's another example about uh, sharks, uh, they will uh, they will be uh, returned, uh, and um, and uh, uh, I I have to say that uh, this um, team of animals uh, was widely supported in the beginning of global pandemic in the end of March, along with fake news and memes. Uh, while seemingly realistic photos of returning wildlife uh, roaming, uh, roaming the city streets of uh, behaving in an otherwise unusual way. I, I think you all remember these uh, photos that uh, uh, spread in, in Facebook and, and, and other ways. I have collected some of these photos and one might think it was realistically likely to happen. But the amount of photos spread during the pandemic always allows the consideration that in many cases we are dealing with fake photos that have been photoshopped or taken out of context. And one of the most popular fake photos in Estonia was a representation of a bear peeking through the window and wondering where the people are. Uh, and um, 
The third approach uh, in this particular mean category is that uh, aside from, from the recovering nature, the historic characters uh, come back. For example, thanks to quarantine, the North Sea has become so clean uh, that the Vikings have returned. The Belarusian forests have become so clean that the partisans uh, are back. And, um, the, and if dolphins are returning to Venice, Lenin and Stalin will come back to Russia. There are the meme about partisans who uh, come back to Belarusian forests, and uh, there are there are the Vikings who who came to North Sea, and and also Lenin and Stalin um, uh, came to Russia. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, this. Um, um, the case shows well uh, how imagery, uh, which is part of the rhetoric of the truth in case of fake news, since the text includes a descriptive photo, turned into a vernacular criticism of the very same truth. Diana Goldstein has said that memes represent an intertextual connection between deceit and foolishness, while emphasizing uh, this is it ignorance and inadequacy of these fake news? It is very common to borrow earlier texts, illustrations, and photos as a part of discourse strategy. A modern legend researcher would take note of the belief motives that are incorporated in the viral image narratives, memes. Uh, one of such belief narratives concerns extinct animals uh, or the secret existence of the Yeti in the modern world or uh, the prehistoric Loch Ness monster living in the lake of Scotland, as it was in the meme. Another narrative motive, which was also used satirically in this theme, is based on conviction that the heroes in this context, Lenin, Stalin, partisans, or uh, even Vikings are not dead, but simply waiting the reappear in more favorable conditions. While the roots of such beliefs are uh, found in other law, fantasies of the secret existence of extinct uh, centuries, such, such as uh, dinosaurs, have been amplified by the fiction and films, of course. And, uh, uh, um, as I, I have to say that um, the third modern mythical theme in these memes and fake photos in their, uh, their main message, uh, build animals who have left their uh, natural habitat and are now engaging, endangering people or animals or birds who are behaving unusually, such as bears, killer bees, sharks, dolphins. Uh, this uh, fake news, photoshopped uh, urban legends or memes spread globally, but it, it was also easily localized. All the evidence gathered without the pandemic represents a combination of truthful and untruthful texts, photos and videos. Uh, the discussed image narratives reflect the latent dream of a better, cleaner, safer and more open world. Even if the fake news and memes uh, have not truthful value, they convey an idea. Nature returns, recovers, and they offer hope and good vibes. The idea of animals and nature thriving during the crisis might give us an idea and a purpose. We went through this crisis for a reason. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ada, for your... Uh very inspirative presentations. Um, does anybody have any question? Um, okay, uh, I uh, uh, I have uh, one question. Um, you you mentioned how some uh, uh, known uh, contemporary legends uh, are transformed in the visual form. Um, did in your corpus uh, 
was some examples uh, of uh, famous legends about uh, stolen kidneys uh, when people are put on um, artificial ventilation that they will stole them kidneys or um, that uh, uh, it was uh, before in the AIDS pandemic, uh, the, the story how the lemons are infected with uh, um, with wires and now um, there are memes about that how in oranges there is wires like some recycled oh, yeah. ML elements of known uh, urban legends which are uh, now mishmash in corona lore uh, yes I, I know these are well known uh, they known motives or well known stories but uh, in this case, uh, uh, nature is recovering. I mm -hmm. I not uh, met this kind of uh, in, in in this material I collected, but uh, I have uh, not not very big collection because uh, no uh, this uh, about this fee is mm -hmm. recovering. Can I say something? Yes. I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you. Uh, I also received uh, very similar uh, memes, but I used other categories for these cycles of jokes about animals uh, according to functions. Uh, I, there were uh, one cycle uh, of jokes about reacting to the ecological crisis where the superiority of civilization is no longer obvious. And it is also connected to Ulrich Beck categorization of culture versus nature in times of crisis. I had uh, this big uh, cycle of uh, memes about time with nostalgic, also with nostalgic photos as well, uh, that reflect, as I told uh, in the uh, previous uh, session, the fear of stagnation or the future. And I called the, the, the group about this mythical uh, uh, ancient animals and also biblical figures and supernatural elements, uh, mythical memes. And I think uh, they express some longing and it's, it is related to what uh, Alexander, I think, asked before, um, the longing to a, a kind of a religious or pseudo-religious uh, framework, framework or uh, way of thinking. Uh, so I thought it's, it's an option to think about it too about mythical memes. Yes, thank you for your comment. It's, uh, it's, uh, I think it's, it's also true because, uh, because uh, if, we, if we look uh, this uh, more wider, this subject, we, you can, you, we can say that they are mythical, uh, mythical creatures also, not all of them, of course, course but, but uh, a lot of them. Uh, we have a uh, um, question from Ian Brody, um, written in, in chat. Uh, thank you, Ada. The flip side is nature is healing, has sometimes been humans are the virus. And the idea that COVID is a means of nature fighting back an invasive species infection. Have you come across that theme or as a text or a subtext? I, I don't catch it. Yeah. Mm, and uh, the, the, the next question from Theo Meder. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it is more um, um, constatation. The meme of nature is returning and the environment is getting clean again, was sometimes followed by the remark, we are the virus. Actually, that's the same question as yes. Ian Brody uh, posed. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So it's the, the other side of the medal. Uh, uh, on the one side, the nature is getting more cleaner. And we, on the other hand, as a, as a species, as a human beings, are realizing that we may be the virus uh, that has been spoiling uh, nature uh, anyway. So, but... Uh, Again, um, it's it's the same question as uh, Ian posed. 
Yes, thank you. Now I understand what you mean. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, if um, um, I think that now we can uh, move to next uh, presentation and. Uh, uh, if you could please stick to the 15 minutes frame. Uh, uh, our next speaker is Tero Achlgren. Uh, he's a doctoral student in folkloristic at the University of Turku, and he his PhD research is focused on the uh, use and role of social media in social activism. And uh, the title of his presentation is Versality of uh, LOL Jesus in Politicized Internet Discussion about Corona Policies. Uh, Tero, the floor is yours. Thank you and thank you everyone. I've, been enjoy I've enjoyed listening to the presentations in the earlier session today and uh, today. Uh, in this session, it's so nice to hear, uh, see memes in different different countries, even though they share the same things. Um, oh. I'm just gonna start this. Yes, uh, is it visible as a slideshow? Yes, we can see it. Um, uh, first off, I need to say that my presentation isn't based on a corpus or a actual research done. It's more of a preliminary idea of a, a specific meme, the LOL Jesus, or commonly Finns call it LOL Jesus, which is faster to say, but LOL Jesus meme. And in this presentation, I'm uh, covering the topic of memes as a sort of a folklore mode of folklore style and uh, as vernal, vernacular communication used in internet and then a brief description of the LOL Jesus meme. And then um, one actual case uh, sort of pictures of the use of the memes in a societal thing uh, commenting on President, former President Donald Trump's uh, view on Corona and how Jesus commented, comments it in the in the meme pictures. Uh, as I said, this is a pretty pretty sort of uh, scratch on the surface approach to the issue. So I can't say that I have covered covered the whole meme in as anywhere near as widely as I could. Uh, yes, um, uh, many also all reference to Limo Schiffman about the uh, concept of meme. I use this Schiffman does as a sort of an analytical tool to study digital culture and the memes, the units formed in, uh, in the use of the internet discussion uh, formed through different choices people made. There can be technical, cultural, and social, meaning that the, the uh, platforms they use and uh, tools they have at, at their disposal, like Photoshop to create images and well, more easily different meme template, meme generators in internet used to create new sort of the same same style items, but with choices in what the um, uh, contents they have. And uh, as an internet meme, um, Schiffman defines it as a, sort of a group of content items that share a, a common characteristics of content form and or um, stance, which is, uh, well, the meme can be recognized as a meme even though the content itself changes and uh, it often does change to the uh, current current issues in, in this example picture is uh, from the start of this year with the uh, uh, January market crisis with the hedge funds and uh, LOLG's image of trashing the uh, or crashing the markets 
in the temple is uh, combined with the uh, idea of crashing the markets in January this year. Uh, the, so it, it's a, it sort of fixes it to the group of digital items mentioned and uh, it has it it works because it's recognized as an LOL Jesus meme and it's circulated and Im imitated and tran and or transformed in internet by different users and uh, this image is taken or this specific meme picture is taken from a Facebook uh, page called Catholic memes uh, there if you're interested in religious content memes that that's uh, one I can suggest to check out in Facebook. And for this uh, uh, second uh, conceptual thing important in my presentation is the concept of vernacular, which Robert Glenn Howard defines as something that is not perceived as official. It's an unofficial uh, sort of produced outside of the office, official institutions. And Trevor J. Blank refers or notes that internet vernacular is often hybrid, hybrid meaning in the sense that first off the meme templates, images, videos are often taken from commercial products or official products, but also many official organizations use meme templates and pictures and other sort of meme material in their official communication. And for the uh, sort of performance aspect of memes, using memes, I think uh, Anthony Bakucitelli had an um, example of a uh, Facebook post he made, which didn't get any reaction or the likes in the Facebook uh, feed of his, which made him think that the what what went wrong? Why didn't the uh, post get any attention to the um, elaborating the importance of the dialogue between the performer and the audience in social media? The um, memes need to be the post need to be made in a specific way to gain any attention, or otherwise they'll just be lost in the uh, bit space. And Richard Bauman has noted that well carried out performances in general has the power to influence surrounding social structures which is an uh, memes aren't actually my main topic in my phd research but the uh, influence and the performing uh, social activism is and which is sort of an, a connection to the use of memes a proper use of memes can can have an influence on affect the, uh, their audiences. And for the uh, actual meme, uh, there's the Know Your Meme website, which, has, which is sort of a wiki-based uh, collection of memes. I use it usually as a sort of a first reference to, to uh, if I want to find out of, of uh, details of a specific meme. And there's a sort uh, a short description of what the LOL Jesus generally is. And uh, it's, I, I think it's also connected to the um, internet phenomena of art vandalism, which has the uh, different sort of art pieces um, modified Photoshop to cover contemporary issues and other issues that are not related to specifically related to the original original art piece. And as an example of an hybrid vernacular use of this specific LOL Jesus, the same that was uh, in the last slide, I, the thing that got me interested in this, um, this phenomenon is that the Tuon uh, Oppilaitospapit or the chaplains of the higher education institutes in Turku I used this uh, I, about a year ago and on Ascension Day to, to announce that they're going to the, uh, their holidays and uh, they used the exact, exact as a LOL Jesus image to note that on Ascension Day we celebrate Jesus within the telecom meeting, which is, of course, this happened in the uh, and Finland was pretty much 
driven to uh, almost a 100 person telecommuting stage of the corona corona situation and for the um the specific uh topic i was i'm trying to cover in this uh, very short presentation is the commenting on trump's uh last year uh, policies on or actually notions or notes trump made and the actions Trump had during a different sort of inc incidents instances during that year, uh, which was uh, we, first we have uh, Jesus depicted as sort of Trump kinda, not depicting Trump as the uh, when Trump had the photo photo shoot outside the uh, church near the. Capitol or the White House. Technically, not certain about that, but the, uh, there was the incident of right police having to uh, clear the way for Trump. So they cleared the way of uh, Black Lives Matter protesting protesters, and that was a huge sort of a made the huge made the headlines, news headlines since. Uh, for Trump to be able to, or Trump having the police to clear off citizens from his way to have a photo shoot at the church holding a Bible, which he actually held, I think, upside down even, uh, holding a Bible. And that's one uh, that he made, made, that created a lot of meme content in the internet sphere. And the other thing is the uh, the other example in this uh, set of pictures is the uh, Trump's notion of not to be not to be worrying about the corona corona situation in the very first stages uh, of the uh, epidemic pandemic actually uh, last year and uh, and him notion that or actually uh, many politicians noting that uh, a, lot, well, a lot of people are going to die and that's that's something you have to deal with and it's sort of depicting the uh, governmental uh, attitude towards handling the upcoming pandemic and of course uh, referencing also to Trump to his his style of uh, taking media space to uh, tweet or to go to TV interviews to brag about his policies he's been doing, and this contrasted in the uh, in the news headlines and in social media context quite widely, and and so in these pictures, Jesus is uh, sort of the Trump. Figure or the figure criticized in the meme post in the actual texts, but in contrast uh, to this, there's also the um, so where Jesus is depicted as the Black Lives Matter protesters, or actually George Floyd, I think, in this context, as there was the with the Black Lives Matter movement and the the aftermath of Floyd's death in the hands of the. Uh, police officer and uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and protest and with it the, uh, the, the issues with police uh, dispersing riots, riots in uh, the uh, in different cities in the USA and the Blue Lives Matter or the thin blue line which is depicted as the guy in this image in the center saying he should have just obeyed the law as then this is sort of a inverse from the uh the use of jesus as the uh will usually eloy jesus guy is is not that nice guy it's and usually the eloy jesus memes cover a lot of sort of game related stuff 
with Jesus being not a nice player in video games, but in this, this is the same sort of style of using the art vandalism of uh, images of Jesus in the different political sort of view. And in short uh, conclusions from these presentations, I tried to, as I said, this is a sort of a preliminary idea about the study could, that could be con, uh, convened, <laughs> and I'm sorry that this is the right word, but uh, as I tried to show that internet memes are a sort of a vernacular way to participate in contemporary discussions, especially in the internet environment and uh, same te meme templates can be used in different different ways and uh, uh, considering political commentary I think it's in, uh, interesting would be to see whose perspective of dance is taken in the images and who is speaking who is Jesus and who is commenting on Jesus in the meme pictures and here's a list of the works cited and thank you for your attention uh, thank you, Tero, ter very much. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, uh, Ida, you have a question, no? Um, um, I, uh, uh, I would recommend that because we are running out of time, we have, uh, I think, 30 minutes until the end, uh, uh, 35 minutes exactly, that uh, if we could uh, have um, our uh, next two speakers now and if we have time later for the discussion because i don't know uh, lisi please help me if somebody will cut uh, our conference out <laughs> panel out or i think uh, our tech support annie knows this best mm -hmm. but uh, our last session uh, also went over time maybe five minutes and uh, mm -hmm. nothing happened Okay, okay. Yes, okay. I can I can leave you speaking as long as you want. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so no problem. We can have <laughs> all day. You. Yeah, you can you can stay here, sleep here, whatever you want. <laughs> okay, uh 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 thank you. Um uh, Okay, um, now our second uh, uh, speaker is Tony Sarinen. Uh, he is a second year PhD student uh, at the culture department of the University of Helsinki. In his research, he uh, he's focused on modern myths and different form of mythical thinking, such as conspiracy theories and doomsday narratives. The title of his uh, presentation is Nature is Healing, Contesting the Nature-Culture Divide in COVID-19 Related Environmental Means. Yes. So, Tony, the, the floor is yours. All right, great. Thank you. And, and thank you for having me here. Um, and indeed, um, a dissertation concerning um, end of the world myths um, might seem like a sort of a far cry from, from, from this topic here. But uh, I guess then again, everything these days is sort of apocalyptic. And there's actually a storm raging outside Helsinki just now. So if I happen to disconnect or something, then it's just nature making a counter argument or something. Um, moreover, when thinking about um, memes, then they, I think they are, memes are an, another way of, of transmitting or, or indirectly addressing these mythic ideas. So there's another connection here. And here, when I am talking about myths, I basically mean these sort of models that explain the reality we experience and they use symbolic language and then they can also be indirectly articulated through humor. And this, this mythic understanding, most often it, it concerns the relationship between humanity and the rest of the world. So this is also something that is, is evident in these, these memes soon. Um, this, this paper itself will, will not engage with myth theories or such. Um, I'm just stressing this mythicity here since a, a crucial point here is that the, the original sort of Western modernity is, is strongly based on certain mythic ideas. For example, that there is this gulf between humanity and, and the non-human world. 
and this idea has given us uh, some uh, really uh, truly idealized concepts such as progress and, and scientific rationality and then human exceptionalism and, and so on that have then been employed um, to control and exploit the thing we, we designate as nature, which at the same time has also been given its own mythic features. So for example, it has often been romanticized uh, as something or another or something that is quite separate from us. Such othering, of course, ultimately contributed in, in no small amount to the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as its, um, the ongoing climate change crisis. And it has, of course, also fueled other forms of, of modern apocalypticism. So a certain um, leading idea of the myth of modernity then is this separation between nature and culture and human um, and non-human. And this divide um, then has been um, challenged thoroughly in, in the past decades by the so-called loosely um, termed post-human view, which, which in, in basically in some ways attempts to recalibrate our relationship with, with our surroundings and, and, and other forms of life on this planet to sort of distance ourselves from the anthropocentric um, view of things. Now to get to the um, meme from last year, the nature is healing that was also discussed earlier today. Um, this will touch on some of the mm, parts of discussion you were having already. So, so hopefully this at the same time answers some of those questions from my perspective. This meme was um, of course born when, when nations all around the globe were, were um, started issuing all these lockdowns and, and were for, we were all forced to halt our usual activities. And then, and then reports such as these as that you can see soon surfaced. So deer and goats wandered um, into the cities to inspect these urban areas. And it was reported and then later disputed that, that, that there were those um, dolphins in, in Venice, in the canals. And then there were also news of, of mountaintops of Himalaya, again, visible after the pollution had, had cleared off and so on. Many were thrilled because of these news as it was formulated as a way for this repressed nature making a return. And it, it arguably, the, the nature, I mean, reclaimed um, human dom domains and undid certain human damage. And basically it was seen that a change was taking place and because regular human order um, had been disrupted, it was thought to be something fantastic and beautiful and hopeful in these stressful times by many people. And it was then even celebrated by some of those who hold this idea of nature as more valuable than the, the idea uh, in, of culture. The dark or um, more extreme side of this position, the hard version, um, was formulated in, in a nihilistically anti-human language, which claimed that we are the virus. So which basically means that humanity is a sickness of the earth and COVID-19 that targets us is actually sort of cure for the planet. And I, I would like to um, note here that this might be as such an anti-modern statement uh, as it opposes the progress of, of human civilization, basically. But it is, is also at the same time, it's a thoroughly modern concept as it could only be um, stated when a person already is sort of aware of, of modernity and living inside these, these bound, bounds of this world. And that we are somehow at another level than the rest of the world. These are sort of implied in this. So it's basically another side of, of the, the coin of modernity as it believes in basically the same things as pro-modern people, but, but there's this, this counter idea that these, these championed ideals are instead evil and unnatural. So this anti-humanist, anti-modern view does not, I, I think, question the dichotomy itself in, in any sense that could be considered post-human. And it was in this very context to oppose the we are the virus idea that the first nature is healing meme was, was crafted. So the very first parody was this one. It was created by Ronnie Becker, who was interviewed by BuzzFeed. And they stated explicitly that, that they were annoyed by the eco-fascist statement and thought of something that clearly does not belong in the nature. So as you can see, there's the implication that this river was um, the original habitat of these scooters. Truth is, of course, the opposite. And, and curiously, there's this um, uh, cr critical um, criticism towards hum humanity in, in Becker's original meme. So although they are opposed to this humanity as a virus analogy, 
there's still the point that humans do pollute and then invade the nature in this way and certain um, cultural artifacts do not belong in the wild. But soon when the meme started taking off, such an implied criticism gave way to a more surreal blending of, of all possible borders, which leads ultimately to a sort of confusion between, between categories. So here's a collection in this very same format, a huge um, rubber duck floating on the Thames, furry beast toys that have returned to swamp areas, and then the yodel boys. This is a reference to an earlier mimetic event where, where this, this kid here was recorded performing a yodel in a Walmart store. So this is actually the meme itself returning to the original context of the meme. And then there are, of course, Viking ships sailing the North Seas again, as they do. And these images already show, show um, huge variation in terms of themes and where the influence comes from. So the Viking meme is a historical joke, um, referring to the past. While the Yodel Kid and the joke is a reference to a certain earlier meme. And so it's basically social media age knowledge. And when talking about the Furbies, it's just that these animals resemble these, these things resemble animals that could be expected to live in such areas. And finally, then the duck is an actual old thing image from 2012 or something that could be appropriated into this meme because of it, that it, there's a river and, and duck. Here are then some others and as you can see there are even more categories. So first of all, in some memes there are these extinct animals like the dinosaurs, while others use animal like things created or imagined by humans, like, like objects such as Furbies or then the mythic Loch Ness monster. Secondly, in other cases, as in the Vikings and, and the black metal bands here, um, there are actual um, human beings, certain groups of humans who are connected to a, a certain natural habitat here that they are associated with, uh, with increasing levels of absurdity, of course. And then lastly, there are these real animals that colonize human spaces, basically. The, the, this is like the original news, but, but this is a humorous context because penguins act like humans as they wander inside an art gallery. So they are seen as completely cultural beings. And, and on the right hand side, it is implied that this seagull has returned to these boots that a human being left behind. Maybe like maybe they were originally the seagull's boots or, or something. This mimetic soup simultaneously spread in other directions as well. So instead of just thing X returning to place Y, there were other instances of nature healing, such as these images that I will just mention in passing. So in the first one, parrots are presented as a classic urban area pigeons that have finally gotten back their color. So it's kind of an over enthusiastic misbelief in, in how nature is always so beautiful and exotic when humans are not around. And then the second and third one are instances where fun is made of the, the um, pollution case, like the Himalayans. So you can see even more fantastic things in the sky, such as the Universal Studios text, which, which circles the globe in their logo. <clears throat> and to analyze these memes then a bit, um, here's first something, um, that came up just uh, lately because mm, since I originally proposed this paper, actual scientific articles have been published on this matter, um, it as well. But here is another one by, by Kai Bosworth, um, who wrote uh, this um, article titled The Bad Environmentalism of Nature is Healing, which was published some two months ago. So here Bosworth is, is um, claiming that these means sort of represent a cultural struggle over understandings of nature and naturalization. And they are then a form of what the scholar Nicole Seymour has titled bad environmentalism, which means basically playful and ironic critiques of environmental thinking and interrogations into to what, what the environmentalism um, presupposes. And these memes do this according to Bosworth by sort of destabilizing our sense of what the concept nature stands for in, in terms of, of separation of the human and the non-human world. And basically I'm talking about the same thing here, that these certain borders and our long-standing modern mm, myths um, sort of are based on, on these norms that we have, um, what, what we are, what our idea of nature is, that we have inherited sort of as a children of modernity. 
And this is basically what has then um, also allowed, um, for example, the mass capitalist exploitation of, of natural resources and animals. And Bosworth states that this means indeed confuse the borders between nature and culture, since it's not only that culture is being naturalized, for example, when, when human artifacts or human beings become part of, um, of larger ecosystems, but that nature is being culturalized as well when animals act like humans or interact with the human social sphere. In this process, as Postbot says here, the nature that is returning is not the one of balance and harmony, but the weird, uncanny, irreverent and silly. In terms of more post-humanist thinking, I mean here that this means end up critiquing both the old modern humanism and the anti-humanism that would claim mankind to be a virus. And they do this indeed in a manner of, of questioning the nature-culture divide itself, moving further away from, from human expectations of things. What is evident in, in, in overall in, in this larger corpus of memes is the way these images make fun. Where first of all, they make fun of the naive and romantic over interpretations of, of how COVID-19 could lead us towards some Edenic existence again. And of course, they make fun of the more extreme argument that humanity is something essentially toxic and, and horrible. Of course, these are indeed um, biased human views, as I mentioned earlier. So in the means, the, the great divide sort of between us and the larger ecosystem disappears when it's humorously shown that all human activity can easily be interpreted as natural, that our social order could work according to the same laws and constitute an ecosystem. So, so our artifacts and phenomena are imagined as ultimately non-human here when mass-produced animal toys act like living animals or when yodel boy memes um, um, have a natural mimetic habitat and when um, Vikings of the Nordic seas are imagined as something that was once feral. And now that when humanity um, recedes, then they, they reveal their wildness again, which is of course silly cause, cause the Vikings are human beings through and through. And then the other way around is also evident here when, when non-humans like the seagull and then the penguins are both themselves um, like human beings. They are both themselves and human beings. <clears throat> at the same time, it's just the context changes. So these resemble a sort of synthesis of the two registers we use when we distinguish these domains of nature and culture. So language used to describe nature is easily combined with language describing human order and, and, and vice versa. So there's no rigid border between these two spheres. We sort of move through them and then play with them all the times. So it's no longer possible basically to claim here that human culture is exceptional or that some harmonic pure nature without humanity is the truest way of life. So we see black metal bands living in the woods and seagulls back in their shoes. Of course, we know that seagulls don't wear boots and most musicians have homes, but um, absurd humor is a great place for us to, to play with how categories can overlap and blend and then imagination is used to form connections between these domains. Um, just as a conclusion, then modernity as such has often been considered in, um, disenchanted and without magic and without myths. And it's only serving sort of these processes that aim to, to aim for progress and, and controlling non-human environments. And this modern order then has been of course shaken many times and COVID-19 also um, shaked this order. And then there emerged a, a redeeming romantic fantasy that took hold of the media for a while, that all these natural things would return to re-enchant the world and undo the damage. But I basically argue that it was instead these nature is healing memes that were more enchanting, as they in response implied that the fantasy of nature healing relied on unstable categories. And then these memes also confused these preset categories with, with wonderful new images. So um, as a final comment, I'm just saying the memes engage with these matters humorously and using intertextual links to, to other domains such as history and popular culture, but they also indirectly make arguments concerning huge questions. And they sneakily sort of challenge um, the ideologies that influence us. And so I think memes like these are a great way to inspect how a sort of social media and collective philosophy is, is articulated and, and contested and so on. So basically, yeah, that was my part. Thank you.
And here are also some yeah, some sources, but I can also copy paste this to the chat so you can mm -hmm. click on the links. Uh, uh, thank you, Tony, very much. Uh, I uh, uh, see here that uh, uh, Eda, uh, Ida and uh, Safi uh, wrote uh, comments on um, in in chat. So if they want to say uh, uh, something. I think I and Safi have been talking a lot. <laughs> so maybe <laughs> somebody else wants to speak. <laughs> uh, okay, th does anybody has any questions? Okay, maybe because we are running out of time, we could uh, 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 move to next presentation. And after that, we could uh, discuss about everything which is written in, in chat box. Um, so our uh, next presenters are um, Dragan Antonievich uh, and Dana Banish Grubišić, which is me. Uh, we are from the Department of Ethnology and Anthropology at the University of Belgrade. Um, main theme of uh, research of uh, Professor Antonievic is uh, narrative analysis, uh, semiotics and, and folklore. And um, the title of our presentation is Slavs Preparing for Coronavirus, Intergroup Humor, Stereotypes and Nostalgia in COVID-19 Memes. So, Dragana, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello to everybody. I'm glad to, be, to participate in this uh, CF Online conference. Uh, sorry not to be able to come to Helsinki, but maybe next time. I will present uh, uh, Anna's and uh, my uh, collaborating uh, work about intergroup humor, stereotypes, and the nostalgia in uh, COVID-19 memes uh, named Slavs preparing for coronavirus. Uh, I'll try to be uh, within the frame of, of time, so Maybe it will be a bit uh, faster than usual. Uh, okay, what's this now? Okay, uh, so uh, we were concentrated uh, on only one uh, uh, Facebook uh, page, that is a Slavorum Facebook page, uh, which was founded in uh, 19, uh, 19, uh, 20, sorry, 2012. And uh, today has more than 1 million uh, followers. Uh, we did the digital ethnography. Uh, that, uh, that means observations without participating and uh, collecting textual and visual uh, data about uh, global COVID-19 pandemic from February uh, 2020 until February 2021. Uh, According to um, official description on uh, their website and the uh, Facebook uh, page, named the Slavs and Slavic culture, uh, 100%, uh, they said that they say that they are focused on uh, entertainment, on uh, different information about events, travel, culture, history, popular culture, tradition customs, beliefs, etc. in 13 Slavic countries. Uh, they also proclaimed to uh, want to have a lot of fun, uh, to make interested international audience for Slavic culture, and also to uh, make online community and the new friends among uh, Slavs, uh, and of course other visitors. Uh, we could say that uh, this uh, Facebook page uh, uh, has an active and uh, very devoted membership because uh, most uh, posted photos and memes uh, were usually liked several thousand times with uh, many, several hundreds of comments and their sharings. And also that uh, those memes and photos uh, and the uh, comments uh, section uh, became the trigger for the recreation of new memes for uh, 
further discussions, uh, 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 often accompanied uh, by uh, uh, personal memories of members, their life stories, uh, and other short narratives uh, uh, about um, things that were depicted on in those uh, on those uh, memes and uh, photos. Uh, briefly to say, uh, the main characteristics uh, of content and the themes on Slavoran Facebook page are uh, next. On the first place, self-irony and uh, auto-stereotyping regarding Slavs, customs, and the way of life. Then, self-irony regarding the way of life in socialism as a consequence of economic, political, and ideological similarities, but not as a result of ethnic and cultural Slavs characteristics. So you have to differentiate uh, 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 way of life in socialism as uh, this and the way of life as a uh, uh, Slav uh, culture. Uh, but we also noticed that uh, uh, there were um, uh, tendencies to unification and even essentialization uh, different Slav cultures in spite of their difference, of course. And also uh, it is noticed uh, in many comments uh, bittersweet or melancholic nostalgia for socialism through the usage of everyday artifacts made in that period and still lasting. Uh, many memes and photos are, um, are uh, they, they represent uh, uh, opposition between Slavs and the Westerners. Uh, they uh, express awareness about Western prejudices about life in socialism and a great number of memes and photos and phases of Western not understanding and not knowing Slavs and their cultures, and also emphasis of Western ethnic and political stereotypes about Slavs. Uh, also, uh, we noticed that uh, uh, there is a contradiction between uh, the content uh, uh, that uh, Slavoran creators pr uh, proclaimed that they want to address international audience. But on the other side, uh, the great number of visitors and posted memes express conviction that Slavic culture is highly contextual and that uh, non-Slavic people uh, would not or will not understand the memes. For example, in this uh, picture, I will translate, a uh, foreigner will never know that at the left side is Rakia, Plum Brandy, filled in the bottle of Coca-Cola, of course. And at the right side is sarma, uh, that is a traditional dish uh, made of a fried mince meat rolled in uh, leaves of cabbage and uh, put in this uh, ice cream uh, box. So we can say that uh, Slavs are highly ecologically conscious uh, for recycling, of course, that is a joke. Uh, but uh, that that was really very very usual till today, to 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 put uh, leftovers in the boxes of ice creams or to put uh, brandies in uh, bottles that which not belong to that brand but to that uh, liquor but to some other uh, drink. Uh, okay, so now uh, we are going. Uh, I, I'm going to present. Uh, uh, specifically COVID-19 internet humor. And uh, we were focused mostly on uh, photos and the memes, not uh, uh, with many texts. So I'll, I will be very fast in my presentation because of uh, uh, time frame. Okay, so Slavs preparing for coronavirus. There are two types, two basic types. Uh, from uh, the one hand, Photoshop, Photoshopped photos of everyday situations like preparing for the lockdown, ways of coping with social distancing and shortages, coronavirus prevention and cure. And the other types are well-known, altered globally, popular memes, uh, but uh, uh, altered with the local cultural context and concerns. So now uh, some of the photos. Uh, as you can see of those photos, uh, Slavs, are traditionally very good prepared uh, for COVID doomsday because uh, they traditionally made food uh, for winter stores. So 
uh, COVID didn't surprise and upset them. Of course, there are humorous uh, memes. And uh, for example, this one, Slavs versus uh, Western Winnie Pooh. Uh, the other people buy toilet roll and hand sanitizers, but Slavs buy garlic and onions because they believe that it's uh, the best cure for uh, any disease, virus or bacteria. And meanwhile, in Bulgaria, you can see uh, empty shelves uh, with the liquors. Well, in Ukraine, meanwhile, Ukraine, on the left side, the man who is very well equipped uh, for quarantine, or the, the another one survival backpack with the uh, meat and uh, liquor also. Or Slavs who recycle Corona beer bottles and fill them with tomato juice. Or quarantine can start with uh, Russian vodka, pickles, garlic, and onion. Then uh, there is humorous ways of coping with the shortage of masks, for example, uh, or made uh, by, with bacon or uh, knitted, knitted masks, uh, which were made uh, by babushke, grandmas, grandmamas, yeah. Or coping with the uh, humorous ways, coping with shortage of toilet paper, as uh, Sasha said, uh, somebody uh, bought a great number of toilet papers and uh, for the others, uh, they don't uh, have to buy it. So uh, people uh, man manage to, co to cope with the shortage of toilet paper, uh, to, to knead it toilet paper or to wash it and dry it and <laughs> serve it again. Uh, in these photos are examples of um, ways uh, of coping with the uh, social distance or lockdown measures and as you can see mostly women uh, find a way to socialize and to keep distance but to don't be lonely uh, now here is a humorous ways of traditional prevention and cure uh, of course examples of um, folk medicine Again, garlic, onion, wine, um, uh, rakia, brandy, and uh, here Ferrero filled with uh, onion and garlic kills uh, COVID 100%. Of course, prevention and cure with booze. It means rakia or plum brandy as a disinfectant or remedy for almost every disease in the other picture. Again, liquor, again, booze, uh, Russian Corona, Russian vodka Corona, crown Corona, uh, that you have to fight fire with fire and vodka for as a therapy. And how to make a vaccine. Uh, Balkan vaccine is almost ready. That is a traditional way, in fact, to, to make uh, plum brandy or uh, to name the vaccine uh, uh, according to uh, vodka Sputnik. Uh, the other types are altered globally popular memes. Uh, we are we're talking about dolphins are coming back in Italy. So uh, these are altered uh, with the local context because in many Slavic countries, maybe in other countries also, I don't know, uh, well-known uh, Danish cookies, uh, after eating them, uh, the box uh, uh, was uh, used to, to hold the sewing uh, kit. So again, dolphin are coming back in Italy. Meanwhile, in the Slavic countries, you have uh, again, real cookies in, uh, in that box, not sewing kit. Of course, that's a joke. Or this one, uh, that very usual way of uh, uh, store leftovers, uh, for example, those sarmas in uh, ice cream boxes. So dolphins return to Italy. And meanwhile, at Balkan, in sarma storage box, you have, again, ice cream. 
all these templates Drake approves and the Babushka approves uh, to heal with the uh, medicinal herbs. And uh, at the end, how long will coronavirus last? Of course, forever, as uh, Golf 2 and Lada, well known uh, uh, cars in uh, uh, Slavic or uh, ex socialist uh, countries. And for conclusion, I will say that uh, main characteristics of Slavorum's COVID 19 photos and memes are the emphasis of Slavs being well prepared and almost used to specific pandemic circumstances, thanks to their traditional culture of preparing winter stores, their traditional close relationships with relatives and neighbors, which enable them to socialize and not to feel lonely, keeping, of course, recommended distance. Then, uh, thanks to resourceful grandmas, babushke, as a central person in the family life who managed situations of shortages or cured with traditional medicine, garlic, bacon, raki, onions, medicinal herbs. Um, then thanks to life and socialism that the custom Slavs also to live with shortages. And finally, the so-called well-known inclination to hard liquor, which made them disinfected from inside and consequently resistant to coronavirus. So thank you for your attention. That was all for me. Uh, thank you, Dragana. Uh, I think that now we have um, actually our uh, uh, official time of the ending of our uh, session is over. But uh, as uh, our administrator said, we, we could uh, prolong that uh, uh, for, uh, yes. Um, does uh, now anybody have any questions for Tero, Tony, and uh, Dragana and, and me or comments? Because I saw that in the chat uh, section that, that was really a live discussion and recommendation and su suggestions. Yeah, I have a question if I can to to uh, Dragana's paper that was can I yes yes, yes of course yes right uh, that was uh, that was quite interesting indeed and then uh, that reminded me of uh, of the old times 1980s yeah. um, which you didn't mention but I thought uh, I'm sure you um, you had this in mind as well at the back of your mind that this kind of this so-called preparation yeah um, uh, goes back to the socialist times and even further right even further even yeah. back to the second world war and, and other um, times of difficulty of this sort uh, but especially the socialist period um, so um, i would say uh, that this sort of preparation that you discuss all kinds of alcohol, you know, and then reusing, recycling stuff and so on, uh, this uh, does not necessarily have to be Slavic. I mean, I think uh, Katalin, I think, mentioned here uh, the Hungarian uh, um, reference here that they have the same kind of uh, meme there. So that uh, I think that could be more of a regional experience or Central, Central and Eastern European kind of uh, uh, experience rather than Slavic one. What would you say? Yes, uh, uh, you have a right because uh, uh, you see uh, in some uh, comments on uh, Slavorum uh, Facebook page, uh, some people says, yes, that's the same in Romania, that's the same in Hungary. Uh, so, yes, they are aware, visitors and members of uh, that Facebook page are uh, well aware of, uh, aware of that uh, similarities uh, uh, in, um, in the, uh, that customs, or how should I say. Uh, but yes, uh, firstly, that was a Slavorum uh, uh, Facebook, which means uh, 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 about Slavs culture. But yes, you, you, you are right. There are many visitors and members who, who, who said from uh, Hungary and Romania, that's the same uh, with us. Because you see, um, I think there's another aspect to it. 
Um, because, uh, for example, I've got an impression that in Poland we, uh, I think we we would like to forget about these things <laughs> rather than bring them up, right? So it's it's like. Um, you know, we used to be like this, but we don't, we no longer want to be, right? So hence, interestingly in Poland, I think nothing like this has uh, has uh, been, has turned up uh, last year. No, nothing of the kind that, that you showed. So that, that's an interesting aspect. Mm -hmm. Anna, want to say uh, something? Uh, yes, uh, of course, we, we don't know uh, which generation uh, writes that comments, but uh, uh, some of the comments are written by the people who never experienced the shortages of uh, communism and, and life in communism, and they, like a generation of post-memory, they, uh, they have nostalgic feelings about that, but I, I think that... Uh, in the, the creators of, of these memes um, wanted to show how the West is uh, perceiving Slavs as uh, um, one culture and they uh, make uh, uh, equivalence between uh, their uh, um, ethnic and cultural identity on the one side and on the other side uh, the they're uh, uh, actually they speak about similar ideological and historical circumstances. Uh, so I, I think that the, uh, um, I, I don't remember that period uh, when the shortage was, uh, but the people like who, who, who experienced that period wouldn't joke about it. I, I don't know. Yes, maybe. Maybe those younger generation joke about that, but we who experience uh, shortages in during socialism, we, we, we will not joke about that, of course. But you know, you don't know who uh, who are um, who created those memes. Uh, who, who are those people? That that that's why uh, I mean that uh, research uh, on uh, digital ethnography research um, has some. Uh, uh, difficulties and contradictions, because you, you, you never know who really uh, posted those memes or or uh, write uh, comments and uh, so on. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So uh, now um, we could uh, continue our di discussion. Uh, or uh, I think be because in the chat section that was really a lo lot of comments. Um, uh, does anybody have something to, to say or to ask? Um, okay, only, only. A few words. Dear colleagues, thank you so much for your interesting panel. It was uh, very, very interesting to hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lisi wants something to say. I, um, if I may, I, I had like, a, I hope my internet connection works somehow. I, I don't hear you well, but. Uh, um uh, i have like a joint comment or question to uh, uh tero and tony um because both of you mentioned or um, uh, mentioned a word in your presentation that uh, made me think about the nature of internet memes in general and this word was irreverent um and on the other hand so on one hand uh, memes are uh, uh, imaginative and playful where other words that you use to to um, characterize the memes and on the other hand uh, irreverent and I was just wondering uh, uh, where is this uh, uh, border between the two irreverent as something more aggressive as a aggressive lack of respect towards something that needs uh, or should be taken seriously or should have respect and then this playful and innocent kind of play or absurd uh, with absurd uh, uh, things like penguins or this bird with the shoes on and so on. 
So um, where is this tension located for you and how, how does it seem? Uh, if, if I'll go first and Tony can answer, then yeah, one thing that immediately came into my mind is that the memes and that kind of stuff is used to, uh, well, we actually, I was in the Folklore Fellow Summer School, it just uh, ended last week, and uh, the topic of it was violence in tradition, and the tradition of violence, and the uh, when you think about the internet content, it, it of course, even though memes generally are meant to be taken as humor, as joke, but they can be used with, well, content of hate speech, especially attacking uh, different groups. So it's, it's, you can't say that memes are inherently humorous or inher inherently intended to be taken only as humor. They do have a wide political context behind them. Mm, yeah, I, I don't think I have much to add to that. Um, but I guess it, it's also related to, to anonymity, which should not be like forgotten when discussing this matter, how, how uh, easy it is then to, to sort of just go overboard or something when, when you don't really uh, lose any, where you can basically only gain so, so, sort of social capital when, when you can make, make these really aggressive jokes in addition to, to or, or kinds of funny, absurd things. So, so if, you don't, if you don't have any, anything to lose, basically, if you're anonymous, then, then it's easy to, to sort of slip between these and move, move basically all the time between these. Somebody wanted something to, to add, or we could uh, finish our uh, uh, section of the of the panel and uh, try to to listen to other presentations. Uh, uh, okay, it was uh, uh, great. Um, we hear so so much interesting presentations and hear uh, how uh, actually uh, even if we think that uh, the corona lore is uh, highly localized uh, the the same themes are uh, from one to other presentation uh, uh, present and um, Maybe we could, uh, I don't know, sometimes uh, think about that uh, global local opposition. And also we, we spoke about, Sasha spoke about um, uh, how uh, there are uh, much more uh, memes in textual form than in visual form. And uh, maybe it is good to compare that with traditional jokes and to see uh, whether that uh, uh, textual jokes are uh, uh, old uh, traditional jokes uh, which are uh, adapted to new situation or they have um, um, new uh, elements uh, which um, produce uh, humor. Um, I see that there are uh, um, lots of comments in, in, in chat. Um, uh, thank you all for being here and for your interesting presentations. And uh, I hope we will see each other somewhere someday. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye. See you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Anna. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.